Hi guys and welcome to another drum dog lesson where we are looking at the double pedal. Now recently we were looking at five beginner tips for double pedal to get it sounding great when you're new to it, but today we're going to be looking at a bit more of an advanced concept to play a syncopated pattern down on a double pedal. Now a syncopated pattern is where instead of playing a constant rate of notes, we're breaking up those notes and only playing some of them to put accents on notes away from the main pulse. Now when you're playing that on double pedal, that's going to present its own challenges as to which foot we're using for which notes. Now if you just go in with the concept of playing everything right lead, and whenever you play a new group of notes you're just going to start on the right foot, you often find that then your left foot ends up on the main quarter note beats, and then the whole coordination of the thing becomes a real challenge and it can start to sound a little bit shaky. Well today we're going to look at a concept that helps keep the right foot on those lead notes but also requires the left foot to take a little bit more authority of the notes that it is playing. Now the concept is as simple as this. Say we're looking at 16th notes for an example, your right foot is going to take all of the 8th notes. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and all going to land on the right foot no matter where we're finding them every single one of those right foot, whereas the left foot is going to take all of the 16th note off beats. So every single E and E, uh, no matter whether it's in beat 1, 2, 3 or 4 or 5, whatever, depending on what time signature you're playing, they're all going to fall down in that left foot. Now where that really matters is that when we play a syncopated pattern down on our feet, sometimes we're going to start a group of notes on an E or an E, uh, which means that left foot is going to be now coming in first in order for the right foot to land back on those main leading eighth notes straight afterwards. To get used to this, we are going to have to get that left foot happy playing those E's and U's on its own. So here's a little example where we're using straight sixteenths to launch into eighths on the right foot and then straight sixteenths again to launch into those sixteenth off beats in the left foot. Let's check it out. Now one thing you should kind of get a feel for once you've played that is that although we've got the left foot carrying on on its own on off beats and that can be kind of hard at first, as soon as you work out that it's preserving the momentum of that pedal, now that's really important because as we're playing those straight 16th notes, the left foot's already playing all of the E's and U's. All we're actually doing is cutting out the right foot. So the left foot isn't changing at all in reality, it's just carrying on while the right foot stops. That can be hard at first, but this preservation of momentum is really going to help us with our groove and consistency while we play some more interesting patterns. Now with that in mind, let's actually apply this concept to a syncopated pattern. Here's an example.
Now that was just one example of how you can apply this concept to an actual musical pattern, but it can be applied to so many different things. So try making up some of your own patterns, try applying it to patterns you've heard in songs that you think that's going to help me keep that right foot on that leading note. Now another interesting aspect of this is when we apply it to triplets. Because with sixteenths, all of our offbeats are exactly that, they're offbeats, and none of them fall on main beats. We're hearing a e a uh, to e a uh, to e a uh, for e a. Uh. But when we're looking at triplets, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, now our offbeats actually fall onto the main quarter notes every other beat. Let me show you what I mean. So if I'm playing that one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet you heard those offbeats actually catch beats two and four. Because of that, when we apply this concept to triplets, we actually get some quite interesting patterns coming from it where the left foot catches those main beats. Just as we did with sixteenths, first of all, let's actually apply a warm up to this to get a feel for how that's going. So we're going to play a little bit of straight eighth note triplets, then we're going to go to just the right foot, back to straight eighth triplets, and then just the left foot. And as we did before, now we've got a hang of that, let's put it into a real musical and syncopated pattern. Now, especially with these triplets, remember to take your time with it, get ready to make a few mistakes when it's new to you, but you know, when you're a hardcore professional like me, you, you don't even make mistakes anymore. <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, this is really kind of hard. Let's check it out though. So there you go, that's how this concept's functioning within sixteenths and then musical sixteenths and then triplets where we kind of change up and catch the main beats and then a musical application there. Find some of your own applications because this really has got a lot of mileage as a concept. Now I want to finish today's lesson with a short little case study of a beat that you'll find at the beginning of an Animals as Leaders song called Cascade. Now this beat does use this concept but in a really quite cool way. The beat is based on a 5-4 polyrhythm. Okay, so that is kind of tough already on its own as an addition to what's going on on the feet. So we're going to be playing straight quarter notes in the right hand, that's what's tying the whole thing together. But then on the snare, we're playing every 5 16th notes. So it's going to land on beat 1, but then 2E, 
but then three and, but then four a, uh, and so on. Every quarter we're shifting that one sixteenth note forwards. But between every snare, we've got a constant rate of four bass drums filling the gap. Now this is a perfect example to apply this concept to because as we're dropping the bass drum from under the snare, we end up with a beautiful snare, right, left, right, left, snare, left, right, left, right, snare, right, left, right, left, snare, left, right, left, right. Now this is a really challenging example. Take your time with this, but remember that preservation of momentum in each foot is really gonna help pull you through this one. Let's check it out slow to begin with and then up to the tempo of the song. Now I really recommend you guys go and check out the man Matt Gasker himself playing that beat because he's also throwing in some pretty cool fills in there where I'm just carrying on that polyrhythm for the sake of this concept. Now I hope this concept has helped maybe shed some light for you guys on where some of the beats you've listened to or drummers you've watched do things and you think how are they playing that syncopated pattern but still keeping their right foot leading? Well this is the secret to a lot of syncopated double kick patterns out there. If you've enjoyed this lesson, don't forget to subscribe to the Drum Dog channel and we'll see you for the next one.